So I thought I'd just make a, uh, a quick video on how to check the fault codes on older model Falcons. This is a EF Falcon uh, Series 2, it's an XR, but really this uh, will work for anything from uh, EB Falcon Series 2, I believe, all the way up to EL. Now obviously they don't have OBD2 ports, so you've pretty much got to do it in a bit more of a uh, primitive way. And so I'll show you how to do that. So if you pull your fuse box door off, and you get to your fuse section, you'll see this plug right up here. And you'll see that there's a series of pins in there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge, if you can see those first two pins right at the end there, I'm going to bridge those two with a paper clip, with this paper clip here. And then we're going to join, uh, it's the fifth pin from the left. I'm going to uh, put a wire on that one. And then the very last pin at the bottom right, a wire in that one. So the one up top's the negative, the one on the right down the bottom is going to be the positive. Yeah, here's my workshop manual, so you can get a better, better look at uh, which pins to to jump. So you can see those first two, you jump them with the paper clip, and then you can see where the uh, the negative. I think that's what I said the first time. Where number two is, that's the negative anyway. So that's the if you count them, that's the fifth pin. From the left and then all the way to the right you uh, put a wire on that one and that one's your positive okay so what does it look like when it's all together I'll show you okay so this is what it looks like when it's all hooked up you can see the paper clip there it's bridging the first two ports then from the top the fifth pin from the left is connected up just to a simple uh, wiring connector there that I've put on there and the bottom right pin is also hooked up and I've just got that going down to a test light so one wire is hooked up to a paper clip uh, and that there is uh, simulating the wire on the right hand side that's the positive All right, that's going to the end of my test light and I've got an alligator clip going to the point of the other side of the test light so when you turn the car onto accessories, don't start the car, just turn it onto accessories. Dash lights will come on, like that. And you should see some flashing lights. Like that, on the tester. So now it's just a matter of deciphering what those flashes mean in code. So now you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. Okay, so let's, let's go through a test run. So turn it on to accessories, just so the dash lights come on without starting the car. If you're using a test light, you're going to see the light flicker a little. And then we will start counting codes when it starts flashing. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five. Pause, one, two, slight half second pause, one, two, Okay, so 522 is the first code, and you can see a long pause there. Here we go again. Two, three, four, five. That's a five. One, two. Second digit's a two. One, two. Third digit's a two. So a great big long pause. Actually, it's a very long pause. So um, now I think that was just a separation code. So here comes more codes now. One, two, three, four, five, so five again. One, two, three, four, five, six, so six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, six, eight. Next code. One, two, three, four, five six so six one two three six three one two three four six three four okay so you get the idea now this is just going to keep throwing codes because like i said the transmission's not in the car starter motor's not in so it's, it's going to be throwing up all sorts of things 
So how do you clear the codes? Uh, well, in this case, there's no point in doing that because, uh, like I said, the, the codes are coming up there because the transmission's not in the car. But what you'll do is you turn everything off and you leave it off for a minimum of 10 seconds. Start the sequence again. Get your dash lights going, so onto uh, accessories without starting the car. And just wait for the codes to start flashing again. So not, not that uh, pulse light there, just wait till everything starts going. Once the codes start uh, coming through again, like that, you pull your jumper loom. Just pull it out, leave the other wires in there, and, uh, and that will clear the codes. And turn it all off. Put your jump loom back in, and then you can recheck see if the codes were stored or not, or whether they're, whether they're cleared. So anyway, that's just a, an overview of how to check the codes. Now, if you, now, I've got a manual here with the actual codes in it. But anyway, that's how to do it.